RF man here. Today I wanted to make a follow-up video from the last video that I made using my two meter board where I showed how to use an RF transformer for impedance matching. And we went from the 50 ohm side, which is high impedance, to the 6 ohm side, which is the input impedance of the LD MOS transistor, the BLF188XR. And we calculated the real part of that impedance, which was 6 ohms, and I used the potentiometer to simulate the impedance, and then I went ahead and designed my matching circuit. So today I want to show on the same board what the results are after I install the transistor. Do I get the same type of results with my simulated load? Uh, we'll see that in a minute. Um, so the way I have this set up, I've got a 50 ohm load on the output, just a 50 ohm resistor, and I'm applying the bias voltage, okay, and setting the bias to the normal level, which is 1.7 volts. And then I go ahead and I'm just using port one on my nano VNA. Let me just kind of swing over here so you can see how I have this set up. Bear with me a minute. So there I'm using point one, port one, I'm measuring S11, all right? And I'm just connecting into the input side of the RF transformer. So that's it. And this inductor is used for tuning. Okay, so basically if you want to increase the frequency, you've got to decrease the inductance, so you spread the coil. And if you want to reduce the frequency, then you have to increase the inductance by compressing the coils. So using this type of tuning, it's very easy because I can pretty much get it anywhere that I want. There, there's enough coils and enough tuning range on this coil to be able to tune this below the two meter band. So that example 144 would be the low end. Um, I've got the inductor design so you could get it down to about 143. And then 148 is the high end. And I also have the coil design so you can spread the coil and get it up around maybe 149 or 140. 50 megahertz. Um, so let me show what the results are. Again, I'm trying to compare the simulation that I did in my last video with the actual results, um, putting the transistor into the same circuit. So let's, let's start with the Smith chart. Okay, now let me give a brief overview on how the Smith chart is used. Um, Basically, the center of the chart, which is here, is 50 ohms. You can see that marker there, okay? And this center line is resistance, okay? And then these circles, these are the constant resistance circles. So this circle here is for 50 ohms, okay? And then we go either increasing or decreasing the resistance accordingly. Now, these curves or your constant reactance curves. And the Smith chart was basically designed from a vector. Okay, those of you who are familiar with a vector or phasor analysis, basically it's just a scale. It has positive numbers on the top, okay, and negative numbers on the bottom. The positive side is inductance, right? That's the imaginary side. So we say plus J, okay, and the negative side of the vector okay, is capacitance, so we say minus J. So if we look at this, right, you can see that as we sweep through the frequencies that the input can, can actually change with frequency, okay? And you can see, for example, here, as we get closer to the 144 megahertz, this becomes inductive, okay? And if we go beyond, it becomes capacitive, okay? So as we sweep the input of our transformer and tuning circuit, we see the properties do change, okay? So the important thing here is that this is the center of the Smith chart. It's normalized at 50 ohms. This is the real part, and we do have a complex impedance, okay, a real part, which is resistance, and the imaginary part, 
which is plus J or minus J, right? So inductance or capacitance, okay? And uh, one of my viewers had asked me, well, when I, when I first designed the circuit, how do I know that I need to add an inductor? Okay, and that, that's a good question. Let me, let me just show here. Okay, put this in presentation mode so we can see it a little, a little clearer here. Okay, this is what it looked like without the inductor. I just had a very short jumper wire placed here, okay, from the input to the transformer, okay, all right, and as you can see, all right, the match is way off, and is it capacitive or inductive? Well, we know that the lower side of the Smith chart is minus J, that's capacitive, right, so here's the, here's the marker at basically 144 megahertz, which you can see there, and you can see it's Capacitive, so we have to add an inductor to cancel out some of that capacitance, and we can calculate exactly how much, but that's not the subject of this video. I just wanted to show the correlation between my simulated test and, and my actual test. So let's go back to the nano VNA for a minute. Okay, so here's our results. Okay, and you can see, um, here's the actual data, and it's the series resistance here. Okay, it's the center of the chart, and we're at 50.08 ohms, so very, very close to 50 ohms. Um, the SWR is 1.02, so almost a one-to-one -one match. Very, very, very close. And um, we also want to look at return loss. And if you remember from my last video, the return loss is how much reflected power, okay? And you can see here at the center of the two meter band. So let me just go back to that. All right, and I'm at 145.96, so call it 146, okay? Um, you can see my return loss is excellent at minus 40 dB. So there's virtually no reflected power. Okay, good amplifier is somewhere around minus 20, minus 25. That would be considered excellent performance. You can use that as a benchmark with your designs, but if you can achieve anything beyond that, um, yeah, you've got a very, very good match. Okay, and so... Let's just briefly go over all the charts. Here's my, basically my 50 ohms here. Okay, and the center of the Smith chart, which is 50 ohms. And this is my SWRs. You can see the dip here, almost zero, it was 1.02. Okay, and then you can see uh, that the reflected power, what we call return loss, is uh, very, very low. There's very, very little reflected power. So, What's the takeaway from the video? Um, the simulated test that we did uh, matches very well when we install the transistor and go back and repeat the test. Um, there's a very good correlation between that and uh, it can be used, I think, for other types of designs as well. This happens to be a two meter board, which is in the VHF range, but uh, also in the high frequency range. Um, so I just wanted to present this and, and show the results um, and compare those results to my last video. Thanks, RF man.